Holy Spirit, continue to move, Lord, as we go to Scripture. Let us know how much you love us this morning, God. Let us know how much you care about us. Let us know how much you gave up just for us. So my prayer, Lord, as the word goes forth this morning, like it's been such a comfort to me as I've been preparing, Lord, um, just the simple things that I plan on saying this morning. And of course, if you don't want them said, eradicate them and you say what you want said. Um, but we open our hearts, Lord, just to hear and just to, just to love you this morning, just to love you. So I thank you for atmosphere that's here. We give it to you, God, in your name. Amen. Amen. My wife is telling me that a, a very, very dear um, senior mentor of ours is here in the midst, and I'm trying to find her. Um, Miss Evelyn, is Evelyn here? Oh, there she is. Oh, wow, there you are. Yeah. Y'all excuse me a moment. I just, y'all got to forgive me. This lady started this church with me and kind of mentored Katani and I, and um, I thought she was in heaven, but God sent her back to see me. So bless you, baby. Oh, mm, love you so much. Oh, love you. Mm, bless you. Good to see you. Hey, Amen. She, she was a mother to us and just shared so much, so much, just a, one of those heroes of the faith, you know, just a strong, strong, strong woman that would say, young man, get your act together. <laughs> and wasn't afraid to do it. And, um, and wasn't afraid to confront whenever she saw me straying or doing anything that looked, even if, 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 I, if she thought it was stupid, even though I thought it wasn't, she'd say it was stupid. <laughs> but Mother Evelyn, we love you. I love you to death. It's, you just did my heart well. You did my heart well. And it's good to see you. Amen. Luke 15, let's uh, wrap up this three-part series that we've been dealing with in um, I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to walk you through uh, what we've been sharing and hope that you can track with me and uh, just want to share just a few things this morning about this last in the three uh, parables that's here in Luke 15. If you back up to Luke chapter 15, verse 1, you're going to see we started out a couple of weeks ago with the parable of the lost um, sheep, the sheep that got lost. Then last week we talked about the, sh the coin that got lost, and today I want to pick up by talking about the son that got lost. So I want to take a moment just to do that, because um, just to give you a little bit of backdrop, the scribes and Pharisees were mistaken on Jesus' purpose for coming into the earth realm, and so he shared these, these three parables with him to kind of amplify the truth that what you see on the screen here is true, that repentance, okay, um, of others must be met with joy and celebration. And I don't know that that means anything to the church yet. And so I want to amplify that just a little more because I want you to hear this morning that this is what it's all about with God. He gets more excited when people are repenting, when unsaved or sinners come to a relationship with him, when those of us that have blowed it, blown it decide to turn it around and come back, heaven throws a major potluck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you ain't had barbecue. Yeah. Until you go up to heaven. Yeah. And so there's a party going on. And, and, and what happens here in the earth is we put more energy into good programming and not the celebration for the say for those that come to our relationship with God. So when a person gives their heart to God, there's just a little pat, oh, thank you. But heaven goes buck wild. It goes buck wild. And so in these three parables that's in front of us, on the three occasions, the first one being the sheep who is from the animal kingdom, um, he, he uses that as an illustration to amplify to the scribes and Pharisees the celebration that happens. Then he goes to this inanimate object of a woman who lost, lost a coin to try to amplify once again um, the importance of the celebration that takes place when a person gives their heart to God. And then he finalizes and concludes the whole, um, the three-part series by talking about a person now that's made in the image and the likeness of God, okay? Now, I need you to say this with me. Say, self, I am made in God's image, in God's likeness. One more time, say, self, I am made 
in God's image, in God's likeness. So, so here's what I want you to see this morning. I want you to see that the focus of today's message is the joy and the celebration the lost son who was made in the image of God experienced when he repented and returned home. I want you to see this because a lot of time we preach this, this parable or we preach this, this story that's in front of us and we, we spend so much time on the in-between stuff about the guy who went away and got strayed and all that good stuff. And we, 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 I mean, we exegete the daylights out of that thing, but we don't spend no time on the celebration. So I want you to view it through the lens of the celebration because um, how many of you are familiar with the story at all? If you're familiar with it, let me just see hands. Okay, good, good, good. Now, here, here's the other part that we do. Here's the mistake we make again. We read up to, I think it's 11 or 24, then 25 picks up with the boy who stayed at home. Y'all remember the boy who stayed at home? Okay. And, and we preach that as well, but we never really deal with why the boy who stayed at home got upset and why Jesus put that in the parable. Because here's what I want you to know this morning. The entire thing with the son and the boy who stayed at home is one story. It's not two stories. It's not like the parable ends with the prodigal son and then picks up subsequent to that with the boy who stayed at home. Here is why Jesus added the boy who stayed at home. And I, I feel like I must say this before I give you the points that I want to share this morning. The reason the boy who got at home got mad or got, was upset is because when he come home and he saw the magnitude of the celebration over this vagabond, vagabond son or brother of his, he got ticked off because his deal was, I have been home this whole time and you ain't never gave me no appreciation service. And I think the reason Jesus put that in there is, is for us to get this as a church. Okay, here's our problem in a church. Let somebody new come in the door give their heart to God, and let them go past you in ministry. I'm guaranteeing you you're going to act like the boy who stayed. I'm guaranteeing you you're going to act like him. And that's why Jesus put that in there so we could understand, listen, and, and, and I wish I had time to really deal with that because as we talk about the, what he gave, what the father gave the son, he wanted the boy who stayed at home to realize, dude, I mean, what I gave him is nothing compared to what you have. And we miss that, we miss that, we miss that because we get caught up in the moment. So I want us to focus on the repentance of sinners this morning so we can get to where God would have us to go. So let me, let me bore you with details. Let me read the parable. I'll narrate it, and then we'll talk through a couple of things. Look at verse 11 with me, and let's kind of walk through that so we can hear what God is saying, okay? He said there was a man who had, and he said there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, give me the share of the property that has come into me. And he divided the property between them. Verse 13, not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into the far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless or riotous living. Verse 14 says, when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country, and he began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who had sent um, him into the field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise, he said, verse 18, and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to the father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, quickly, I mean, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son was dead and alive, is alive. 
he was lost and he is found, and they began to celebrate, okay? So remember with me, I want you to focus on today's message on the joy and celebration that the boy who was made in the image of God, what he experienced when he repented and returned home. Now, before I even go into the message, let me just say this to you, and then I'm going to get to right where I want to go. Lest a person is sitting here feeling self-righteous, saying, that's not me. I need to open up by saying, by default, every last person in here at one point in time, if not still is, was this prodigal son. Are you guys hearing me this morning? It's very important that we hear that. At one point in time, every person in here, we all were like this prodigal son. Let me tell you why I am saying that, okay? David puts it this way in Psalms 51, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. By default, when I came into the earth realm, I couldn't even talk or speak or had sense yet, but I was ignorant enough, even in my infancy, to act like I know better and disobeyed God. So by default, if I'm born, by default of birth, I was on my way to hell because I was in prodigal son mode. Let me say that in English. You weren't born saved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you weren't, you, yeah. You, weren't, you weren't born saved, okay? So, so, so we all asked for our stuff prematurely. Okay, just like he did, and we all went out prematurely and did crazy, crazy stuff. Now, there's a lot of historical, cultural stuff that I can give you about the passage, but it's not relevant for where I want to land this morning, so I'm going to overlook a lot of that stuff and just get to right to where I want to be. Uh, let me back up. I want, to, I want to hit right here real quick, okay? This is the part that I want to begin. Now, before I even mention what's on the screen, look with me, um, verse... 13, okay, you guys are there? Verse 13 picks up by saying, not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and he took a journey into a far country and there he squandered his property in what? Everybody say reckless living. Come on, say, say reckless living. Let me read verse 14, then we're going to back into that. When he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the field to feed pigs. And it says in verse 16, and he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. And I like verse 17, when he came to himself, when he came to himself, when he came to himself. Now, here, here's what you need to know. Let me just give you, let me just give you this little bit, and then we're going to walk into the text. Culturally, the oldest son is always the first to leave home. Okay, And the way it would work culturally is that the dad would have his inheritance, and then when the son was mature enough to leave home, the dad would give the son the, the, his first, you know, the first right to the birthright, whatever that situation is, and then the, the, the son would be blessed normally in marriage to move off and go do his own thing. For a young son to be arrogant enough to go to the father before time, prematurely and say, Daddy, give me mine, he was out of order already in the first place. You guys are tracking with me. So number one, he wasn't mature enough to handle what he was getting. Come on, come on. Number two, he didn't have the common sense and the cognizance enough to manage his stuff to do the right thing with what he had. Come on, are you with me? And number three, he was so excited with what he had, he thought the world belonged to him. So, man, he went out and did some stuff. And the author uses a nice euphemism. He says, in riotous living. And he has uh, this Greek word. It says he squandered his wealth in riotous living. Now, now the reason I said that that way is because I think if we look at this young son, every person in here, unless you're my wife, because she's the only perfect person in the building, um, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I got to say it like that because I got to go home. Um, um, you know, that, that all of us at one point in time were young, 
arrogant. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. And, and we've done some stupid things, and we went out into the world prematurely. Oh, come on. Don't, don't act holy on me right now. Don't act holy on me. And, and, and I'm going to summarize the third one like this. And we all have a past. Holy people go like that. It's okay. We all have a past. I mean, you know, I know God forgave you. I know, I know all that stuff, but you still have a past. Okay? Okay? And, and, and what, I like about, what I like about the Greek word that talks about, the Greek verb that talks about the past that this guy had, he says he squandered. And let me tell you what that word means. Is that it, it's, it's a word that kind of speaks to the fact that he would go something and he would just be throwing money at stuff without even thinking about it. Come on now. Because the world had cars with 20-inch rims, he'd just throw money at some 20-inch rims and get him some 20-inch rims for his camel. You know? <laughs> Come on now. I mean, because, because I mean, not, nothing was wrong with his 30-inch TV, but they have made 65 inches. Well, heck, they're at 80 now. And, and, and because he had money, he just... Threw it at an 80 inch because he could. Come on, y'all, y'all not hearing me this morning. Come on now. I mean, just throwing money and, and uh, that, that's the good stuff. But for some of us, I mean, we went down Colfax and threw money at people we shouldn't be throwing money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not telling you who you threw it at, but you kind of get what I'm saying. I mean, I mean, there's laws that have been passed now, and some of us are going to buildings that used to be banks, and we're throwing money in, in you know, buying stuff that, that, that um, um, let me leave that alone, because some of y'all have cards. Um, let me leave that alone. Um, but, but we're throwing money where we should, we're squandering our wealth in riotous living. So at some point in time, all of us did foolish stuff. Let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, and here's what I need you to know is that even in our foolery, as upsetting as it was to the Father, He never disowned us. Oh gosh, you got to work with me on this. You got to work with me on this. Are you hearing me? Okay, but, but to, to start to move to where I really want to land, I thank God for that phrase. The lost son came to the realization of where he was and he repented, okay? Notice, look at the text. Let me, let me read this in the text, and I want y'all to see this so we can go. Look at what it says, um, verse 14. When he had spent everything, it says what? Come on, a what? Arose what? In the country, and he began to be in what? Now, now isn't it amazing that the, family never, the famine never shows up when you have money in your pocket? As long as we have friends, we have relations, it's all there. But he began to be in need. And so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country who sent him to the field to do what? Now, parenthetic on this. I need to say this real quick, then I'm going to get, continue to move. No reputable Jew would place themselves in a pig pen to feed Jew, to feed pigs. Okay? Matter of fact, no reputable Jew would want to even see a pig or be seen with pigs. Come on, are you talking to me? Okay. Now, to show you the demise of this young man and how bad his situation got, the text says that he was so low, he almost ate with the pigs. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Now, the reason I need to point that out is because I think one or two of us in here have been in a pig pen before. Okay? And the reason we're not still in the pig pen is because what happened to this young man. Notice what he did. Verse 17 said, when he came, yeah, yeah, yeah. And watch this. Watch this. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, and here I am perishing with hunger. Now, let me, you guys need to hear me say this as we move on. It doesn't matter where we find ourselves right now in life, 
Don't miss the, make the mistake of comparing your present situation, my present situation, my present circumstance to somebody else in the earth realm. Because their famine is coming too. Okay? If you're going to compare, or if we're going to compare ourselves to anything, make the comparison to my father's house. Oh, come on, talk to me this morning. Make the comparison to what's in heaven because God has more and better than anything this earth can happen. So here's the thing that opened his eyes, not what he saw in front of him, not what he can have in the earth, but he compared himself to his father's house and that was enough to illumine him. So he came to to the realization, you know, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. As difficult as it is, as tough as it may feel, he came to the realization that this is not it. So notice what he did. He took the initiative to actually. It's not enough to repent and stay where you are. (laughs) Because this is what we do. God, forgive me, and we stay where we are. You guys are tracking He took the initiative, and he actually, what? Returned home to repent of his sins. Let me read. Let me read, and I'm going to land. Verse 17, when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hard servants have more than enough bread, but I perish with hunger? And then he says in verse 14, I will arise and go to my father. He planned this thing out, saying, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called a son. Verse 19, treat me or make me as one of your hired servants. And verse 20 is pivotal. And he arose. And he arose. And he arose. And came where? To his father. Look at verse 20. You guys are there? And he arose and he came to his father. Let me read this. Now this is where the story gets good and this is where I want to hang out just for a few moments. And all I want to do is encourage you today So we can see things through the lens of God. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion, and ran and embraced him. And did what? Look at verse 21. And then he, the son is talking now. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Bring quickly the best robe, put it on him, the ring on his hand, shoes on his fit, feet, kill the fattened calf, it says, and now let the party begin. Say, while he was a long way off. Look at number three real quick, and then we just, I just want to talk to you. A great celebration was given in honor of the lost son when he returned home. Say, while he was a long way off again. I need y'all to get this. I, I got, bear with me, okay? Let me just belabor the point. One more time. Say, while he was a long way off. Now, let's talk. What happened when he was a long way off? Somebody yell it out. His father was what? What happened? See, that's what I expected you to say. I expected you to say the father was looking for him. I expected you to say the father saw him. What happened while he was a long way off? What? Somebody yell it out. Who said that? Who said that? Okay. Yeah, his father ran. That's important. This is important. This is important. The mistake we make in Christianity is we think in repentance, you've got to make it all the way in for repentance to kick in. (laughs) Excuse me. Let me go to Colfax real quick. (laughs) Since you answered, you must be in Colfax. Yeah. Yeah. And in the midst, in the midst, pretend you got a pipe. You ain't got nothing in your pocket, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling them? (laughs) In the midst of him still sinning, the father comes and meets him. I wish I had. Come on, y'all. Wow. He was a long way off. The father met him. And walk with me, John. Here's the image. I feel gay doing that. No, no, let's just walk, bro. Yeah. And uh, and, um, (laughs) the father 
is walking with him. Wow. Are you seeing this, guys? Walking with him before the celebration even. Yeah. 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 I need, I need to point that out. You know, sir, thank you, man. I need to point that out. I need to drive that home because a lot of us don't realize the extent of God's love and the magnitude and the distance God will go to reclaim a sheep, a coin, or a child that belongs to him. Okay? Now, the reason I need to drive that point home, because the church, we don't understand that and we don't behave like God. So here's what we do. Get it right and come and I'll be here when you... I wish I had somebody. I'll be here when you get here and we wonder why they can't come. Listen to this. They don't know the way. If they knew the way, they'd come. So we ought to be like God and we need to learn to go meet people while they are still a long way off. I wish I had somebody in here and help them to walk on towards Christ. The text says the whole time the daddy was praying, the daddy was looking for him, the daddy was hoping that God would answer his prayers and then the moment the spirit intervened and he came to himself, Notice who took the first step. The father went. I will arise and go. And he starts. Then the father met him, met him, met him. Church, hear me out. For the party to be right, we've got to learn to meet people. Listen to this. Where they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit expecting babies in Christ to behave like mature believers. Are you hearing me this morning? In his immaturity, he went out and he did stuff. In his immaturity, he squandered his wealth. In his immaturity, he did all that stuff. And the moment he came to himself, the moment the Spirit quickened him, because here's how the Bible puts it. All of us in here, let me paraphrase, were dead in our trespasses and sin, but God, by his grace, made us alive in Christ. He quickened us. The only reason I'm able to respond is because God woke me up and I came to myself. The only reason you're able to respond is because God woke you up and you came to yourself. It takes the Spirit of God to wake us up. And then when God wakes us up, listen to this, He expects the church who are the bearers of His Spirit to go meet His sons and daughters and bring them home. <sighs> As a tracking, you guys are tracking, right? A couple more things. Two more things. Watch this. The Father celebrated the Son's return by blessing Him with a what? What else? What else? And what else? Man, that's heavy. Um, the robe is, signifies royalty. Hey, man, you a son. Not a wannabe son. Not a son in training. <laughs> but a full-fledged, blood-bought son. Are you with me? Royalty, heir apparent to the throne. At birth, joint heir with Christ. Man, I, 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 hope, I hope you're hearing this, okay? A robe, then he gives him a ring which signifies authority. You're sharing in my authority at birth, okay? Then he gives him the shoes thing to signify that, listen, you belong to the house because in those days, slaves didn't have shoes and shoes mean, you know, they wouldn't run, they wouldn't go. You kind of get what I'm saying? So shoes meant something. And then I love this. He killed the fatted calf. Here's what the fatted calf was reserved for. It was reserved for special occasions when special guests or certain individual comes or certain feasts, but he didn't spare the calf. He killed it for the boy. The moment he came home, he got all that. The moment he came home, 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 here's what we do when folk come home, sit in the center section so we can keep an eye on you. (laughs) 
and we make them stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> when you come in, I just got here, man. When you come in, I've been here six months. They still watching me. <laughs> Do not act like they're not people in the church that you look at because you knew they just came in. The moment he came in, okay? And then B, the celebration was given in honor of the restored state of the lost son. This is heavy. This is heavy. The restored state. Come on, say restored state. Very, very important again. Say it in restored state. Let me say this theologically, okay? The moment this guy repented and gave his heart back to God, he was no longer in process of being saved. He was a son. His salvation was complete the moment Christ entered his heart. So the instant Christ met him and he met Christ, restoration. So because you're a son or a daughter, not you're trying to be. Now, I'm not saying anything about the growth and the discipleship and that backside, all the other stuff that needs to happen. I'm talking about the current state, okay, that he comes in, and the moment he comes in, saved, sanctified, sealed, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with fire, all of it right there. Restore. I know that messes with some of your theology. We can talk about this, but... That's why he gave the celebration, because he's a son, not a trying to become one. Amen. Discipleship begins with sons and daughters. Are you hearing me? Is this making sense, guys? Okay? So that's why the celebration was given. Now look at this last two, then we're going to stop. This is important, okay? The celebration, I like this. The celebration, this is heavy. This is going to mess you up. It was given despite how the son lost, the lost son squandered the wealth he received from the father. Let me let that permeate your heart for a while. Then I'll explain. I was, when the Lord dropped that in my spirit, I kind of little shout in my office all by my lonesome because here's what we do. Now, let me back up. This guy took the money. And when you go to the older son, here's what the older son said. That man, that boy, wasted your money with prostitutes. That's what he said. Marijuana shops. Cocaine. Camels with 20-inch hoofs. I mean, <laughs> he, 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 he squandered I mean, he blew it. He, when I say blew it, he blew it, he blew it, he blew it. But the moment he come home, in spite of how he blew it, the father still gave him a party and celebrated with him, regardless of how bad he blew it. Man, that ought to make somebody feel encouraged this morning because here's what we do to ourselves. Well, let me talk about me. Here's what I do to myself. When I sin, I feel as if there's no way God could love me again. When I blow it, I feel as if God turns his back on me. Come on, maybe you don't sin, but I know I do. And when I mess up, I feel as if God doesn't love me. But this tells me it didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter how I did it. It didn't matter how long I did it. When the Father brought me, home, he threw a celebration for me. Ah, and we need to learn to act like that. Here's what we do. I'm going to watch you to see if you're going to do it again. That's what we do. The moment, regardless of his past, oh my gosh, that's what, excuse the word, pissed the older brother off. Forgive me. All right. That's what did. Because here's what he said, just like us good church folk. Let me just get vulgar. He was out there hoeing. 
That's what we say. Excuse me. He was out there. Y'all pray for your pastor. Amen. But I need y'all to hear it just like it is. All right with me? He was out there cussing and he was out there, come on now, pimping and, and doing it all. And you got nerve to take portion of my inheritance and give it to that fool all over again. And here's what that daddy said. It doesn't matter. He's my boy who came home. Ha! Ah. And church, church, I need you all to know this morning that God loves you like that. I need you to know that. I need you to know that this morning. I need you to know it because... You're looking at a guy that think a second chance never existed. You're looking at a person that think, man, ministry is over for me. You're looking at a guy that said it was done, but God told me I love you and what you did doesn't matter. I will forgive you. I will give you a second chance and a third chance. And the moment you come home, I am throwing a party for you. Somebody needs to hear that just like I needed to hear it. Are you hearing me? He loves us in spite of. That's the beauty of the cross. See, Tyree, you teased us with that thing. You just sang a new version of it. I just needed to go old for a little while so somebody can realize on the cross, his blood covered your sin. On the cross, he paid the price. On the cross, it was already bought back, redeemed, reconciled, atoned for. So when you do it, he don't have to go die again. He just has to love you because 2,000 years ago, he took care of it. So when you did it, it was not a surprise. It was not a sin that he missed on Calvary. Ah, you got to hear me this morning. He did not miss it, so he's not shocked. So he can throw the party because he expected that you would do it. Ah, I'm fired up about this thing. Because the church is too doggone religious. We forget what happened on Calvary. We forget what happened on that cruel cross. Before we even came on the, sin, on the scene, he died and he paid the price. So the moment we repent, hey son, come on, fire up the grill. We cue in the day. Because a son and a daughter has been restored to their rightful position in Christ. Are you hearing me? Last thing, and the celebration was given despite the lifestyle, the lost son lived while in the far country. Let me say this. There is no sin you could ever commit that will cause God to turn his back on you. This is what he wanted the scribes and Pharisees to see. Sheep couldn't sin. The coin couldn't sin. But this boy, made in the image of God type people like me and you, can do some stuff. And he wanted the scribes and Pharisees to see, doesn't matter what they do, I still love them. I'm going to get them. And I will bring them back into a relationship with me. Church, our challenge at Restoration Christian Fellowship and Church Universal, we got to learn how to behave like Christ. Celebration in heaven over repentance because restoration has taken place. God throws a party, man. He gives us a ring. We get status. He gives us a robe. We get some title. He gives us some Air Jordans. You know, he just... He hooks brothers and sisters up. He does. He really does. And then he goes out in the pen and he doesn't get that skinny calf. You know how you do when you invite folk over you don't like? You go grab that steak that's been in the freezer for two years. Yeah. 
God doesn't do that. Yeah. He kills the fatted calf for fools like you and I. Isn't that something? Come on, y'all. Come on. People like you and I that blow it. And so today I want to say to you, if you're here, come on, worship team. And you hadn't experienced God love, God's love like that. I want to challenge you to respond to that kind of love. One author puts it this way, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. This parable, this, this pericope, this story, this illustration of this lost son is just Jesus trying to amplify the magnitude of his love and the extent to which he's going to go and the celebration that takes place in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who needs no repentance. So when we say, God, forgive me, and we begin the process of turning it around, he comes and he meets us, and the party begins. That's love. That's love. So let me say this to you. Uh, don't ever let anybody condemn you when God loves you like that. Are you hearing me? Somebody want to go off when you just look at them and says, hey, do what you got to do. God loves me more. And walk in that. Bow your heads with me.